G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and here we are back at my allotment again. Uh, my first allotment video was about three weeks ago where I was showing an overview of my allotment and things that I've got growing in, coming into winter now. We're about one and, or one day away or so from our uh, first day of winter. So it's getting a bit cool, it's about 26 degrees today. In fact it's overcast, we had a lot of rain last night which was fantastic. We had a good run of about 12 days or so of hot sunny weather getting up to 28 degrees and it felt even hotter than that if you're working out in the garden which isn't unusual for the subtropics but it still is a little warmer than than expected for this time of year but a good soaking like this is uh, really great for the fruit trees and the, and the garden you just can't beat it you can't water or irrigate better than rain there's nothing that beats good beautiful nitrogen rich rain so let me take you around and see how the garden has been growing and I'll give a bit of a narration on what I've been up to and how things have worked and what things haven't and I'll uh, try to morph between the garden beds because it's quite a size this allotment and I don't want to waste time walking between each thing I'll, I want to use the video as best as I can to talk about plants and growing. So let's get into it. Here's my aerial shot. And if you saw my allotment video, you'd notice that I now have shifted those garden beds that were down the left here near our play gym. And I've placed them at the back so that my goal of centralizing all our vegetable patch is uh, has come around because it wasn't working having these beds separate over there that was a heck of a job because they were large garden beds and we'll have a look at them later from an overall perspective pretty well nothing much has changed except there's that willy wagtail just spotted him getting into my seedlings again Anyway, I'll talk about that willy wagtail later. You can't see him. There he is on the rock. See him going around my seedlings? A little bugger. He's trying to get in. I've put a cover over the top. Rightio, let's start at the front. And we'll work our way all the way down to the back. So I've got these large pots with these avocados growing in them because the avocado trees don't grow well in our soil. They die very quickly within about the first 12 or 18 months because our soil is heavy clay and as soon as the taproot gets down, she's stuffed. But they've been growing really good in these pots. These are a dwarf variety and I'm hoping that this will be a success because we've got the right climate for avos we just don't have the right soil no matter how you build it up I've tried several million types of things and it doesn't work underneath these avocados I'm throwing herbs and strawberries and the avocados don't seem to mind it at all there's some strawberries in that one over here. I have my parsley and sage and an old eggplant that's died. Some more strawberries, that one's going to flower. Our strawberry season here coming into winter is right in full swing now, commercially. But in my place, my strawberries are a little bit behind. Now I know a strawberry farmer and he said that's not unusual. So their commercial varieties, they, uh, they get special varieties and, and whatnot. So and this last one, I've got some oregano spraying over the edges there. Grows beautiful, that herb, and is so good in Italian cooking, as we all know. So I propagated a whole heap of artichoke plants. These are globe artichokes. And I just 
took the pups off my last season ones and most of them have taken beautifully. They are loving this time of year. I've had one or two that I've uh, kind of failed maybe. This one here, for example, is just not pulling through like the other ones have. Staying little. So I don't know what's going on there. It might keep it might come good, don't know. But I've got plenty of artichoke plants, so it doesn't worry me, it's just that it annoys me that there's a gap in my garden because I like planting things very close together. It looks a little sparse now, but believe you me, when all these plants start coming on, this will get really heavy, and that's what I like. Yes, you can sometimes crowd out plants, like say this cucumber here, it's crowding out a little bit, and then I've got a dill plant that's growing in there that came up by itself. So things start to crowd. Some people don't like gardening like that because they, it can affect the performance of certain plants. I like gardening like this. I don't like seeing too many spaces. Uh, for our climate and for my way of gardening, I enjoy close gardening. So I've got a cabbage plant coming up here. That's a self seed, but I've put it into that spot. This cucumber here, I wasn't sure what variety it was when I first planted. I think it's a Lebanese now because you can see the cucumbers growing here. Uh, they look wonderful. Probably right to pick now um, before they get too big. Now this cucumber suffered dramatically from aphids. Really ripped into it. So what I did was I mixed about 20 mil of uh, standard, I think it was peanut oil, drop of washing up liquid in about a litre of water and I sprayed the underside of these leaves to um, hook into the aphids and give them a little bit of a lesson and I've removed some of the leaves that were a problem and uh, I've also squashed a lot by my hands and it's doing well it's in between these two tomatoes this is a Super Roma and uh, it's super alright there's a squillion tomatoes on this and it doesn't look like slowing down there's one just starting to ripen down here it's got a um, all my tomatoes have got a little bit of target spot and some early blight that's not unusual for me my tomatoes generally don't last a big season that's why I plant lots of them and I can continue to replant them um, I'll talk more about tomatoes another time but uh, suffice to say disease doesn't worry me with tomatoes or fungi or anything like that um, I, I I tend to just cope with it, I don't get too worried about it. These are a beef steak. And that plant is going well, besides the you know, besides the target spot here and there. Whoopie do. And uh, they're going lovely. You see that I don't do a lot of trimming on my tomatoes either, but like I said, I don't want to get talking too much on tomatoes at the moment. This is a bragger. It's looking good. Something to brag about. And I've got a zebra here. A tigerella. I think that's a mortgage lifter coming up. Uh, something else. I threw a squash in there because there was a spare one left over. And I've got heaps of other things on the go. These are self-seeded cabbages. Coriander's just popping up here and there and everywhere. My peanuts are coming along great. Peanut seedlings, so I'll be able to plant them in my long bed in the middle soon.
looking forward to some good boiled peanuts and moving down I've got some other tomatoes that are on the go I guess this you could say I've staggered them to make sure that I have tomatoes for a longer season these are pickling gherkins they're taking a while to grow they're growing rather slowly and behind that a dill plant has just popped up so I've left it there because obviously pickling cucumbers and dill go together nicely so I think my garden knows me watermelon mini watermelon and that's starting to flower maybe see that from the other side I'll go around and have a quick look at the other side and uh, another tomato there's that mini watermelon I hope I get a few out of that it's only a tiny watermelon about the size of a kiwi fruit and I have never grown them before but I want to see what they like I've got a little mini eggplant here that I grew from seed that's growing well but we're so full up on eggplants and I've got a whole bunch of little eggplants coming up from seed that I just sprinkled in here uh, I actually showed that in the last video I just sprinkled them in to self seed and now I can pull them out and pot them up or place them in the garden somewhere else potatoes this is just a bit of an experiment I've got going all these type of plants I've just thrown in sort of spare plants and that into these pipes whack the watering system on it and it's also got grape cuttings they've got dormant now because of winter but in, in spring again I'll pull out all these subsidiary plants and I'll let the grape vines grow on again got another lovely big self seeding tomato going on here it's going really well this is a yellow cherry quite large that is probably my best self seeding tomato plant that I grow and I've stacked in a few beans they're coming up here nicely and starting to climb up this trellis and they'll intertwine with this tomato and hopefully make this whole area a nice big wall of tomatoes and beans the back of the bed here I've got some cauliflowers coming up and I've lost a few cauliflowers something ate them out of my rows came out here one day and they were gone Love it. you get that don't you uh, here's some cabbage and I've got some tomatoes, onions and some leeks coming in here which you can't see that well like I said we've had uh, so many eggplants we don't know what to do with it we've pickled it, we've eaten it, we've oven baked them so this might look a little bit like it's it's a waste but when you've got plants performing so well and they've all come up by seed uh, sometimes you do get a bit of a glut and you can't possibly even preserve and eat them all but we're going to continue eating them as much as we can fortunately we haven't been able to give a lot away we usually do but these plants are starting to come to the end of their life and uh, I'll replace them with some of the seedlings that I'm making same with my tomato here this is this one that I've cross that came up by itself and it crossbred by itself and it's a cherry but it's crossed with something else you can see how large they are it's quite a few seeds in it but it's really awesome tasting and it makes a fantastic sauce but the it's not very well it's not as disease resistant as say that yellow cherry is this one here gets to a good height and then uh, she starts to perish it picks up quite a few diseases and I don't spray my tomatoes with anything so 
but I've got so much fruit on this, it doesn't matter. I'll just grow some new ones in a couple of weeks time I'll have seedlings going and four or six weeks I'll have another good tomato plant producing tomatoes. The flavour is incredible and these trusses are lovely. Here I've got a really closely planted zucchini at the front and squash at the back so look at this awesome zucchini flower coming out there. Isn't it gorgeous? And here's a squash at the back there. Beautiful flower coming up. Fruit. These plants are just growing incredibly fast. I've had to prune them back because the squash was overcrowding the zucchini. Look at the size of these leaves. It's like big elephant ears. My god. Aren't they huge? We're going to get lots of squash out of that. So that's um, it's going quite well. And I, I like how they yes they might be a little bit overcrowding each other a little but it's it's also blocking out all the weeds. These are growing in pretty much chicken manure and mulch. Here's some self-seeding cabbage that I've just left grow in place and a few more of my last season artichokes. Coming to my round bed little section I've got these iceberg lettuces which are really taking off And they're starting to form hearts now. Can't grow these any other time of the year. Got a small window of time, this is this next three months, to grow this type of lettuce. Otherwise I have to grow the leafy type. I can't grow hearted. My peppers have died all back, which isn't unusual, but I think they've died back a bit too much. And they've also got some type of blight or target spot on them. So they're, they're probably buggered, I'd say. And might need to plant new plants there. Over here, I've refurbished this bed. See this little bloody willy wagtail. I'll just, uh, I'll just show you him for a sec because there's a story behind him. He has been eating. He has been eating my seedlings. He's obsessed with my bowl. So I refurbished this bed and uh, bolotti beans. These are a dwarf variety. And they're just gonna be, they're just planted circularly and in the center. And I've got these devil stakes here that I've just poked in. And I'll probably put one or two more because even though they're a dwarf bean, they'll get to about 40, 50 centimeters high, they'll start to flop over. So I'll just wrap some twine around and just keep them up. And they should grow, should get a nice little crop. It should look great in this bed. Looking forward to seeing how it goes. Here's my kale. With a Capsicum in the middle, starting to flower. And I've got spinach at the back here. All going good. And speaking of the seedlings, this is what I've had to do. Just <clears throat> cover it from this little guy. 
I've got some pumpkins on the go and some purple cauliflower coming up and different pumpkins and squash South African gem squash as well and I've made these out of uh, toilet paper rolls just cut them in half and they're going to be my biodegradable pots that I'll just plant in like that without having to undo them or Get them out. I'll start planting them out soon. But you can see the damage the bird's been doing. Pecking at my pumpkins. Coming to my long bed, I'm still working on refurbishing this. The corn is stunted because I planted it at the last month the very last month that it should be planted in this time or in this climate and I was pretty well too late although I'm still going to get two or three cobs or by the looks of it at least two cobs out of each plant and they're going to be normal sized cobs so that even though it's stunted it's looking pretty good looking healthy and the cobs are looking good but uh, yeah lucked out on that one it's not growing ideally so I'm refurbishing this bed through all the quail mulch and chicken mulch that I've grabbed from down the back of my pen and then I'll plant a lot more stuff in here like potatoes I'm keen to get them in and some garlic and a few other things. My turmeric still hasn't died back yet. It's starting to get there. I've got some cucumbers coming up here onto this makeshift trellis. And they're going well. These are a variety that were given to me and we're not sure what quite what they are yet but they are growing very well. My tunnel trellis, I've got more beans coming up here. I've got a tomato here that I've got to tie to the top. So what I'll do is I'll prune it and then I'll get some string and, and some twine. I don't know what type that is. I really know what type a self-seeded tomato is. It's like a bit of a lucky dip here. And I'll tie it to the top here. And we'll grow it up. It's an indeterminate type, obviously. It's probably a cherry or a yellow cherry. Um, yeah, I've still got my chilies on the go there. And finally, I've finished moving my three garden beds from over in our play gym. It's still a bit of a mess here. Watering system in place and garbage and stuff around, but the play gym is now nice and opened up. And I've got my three beds. This one here is probably where I'm going to put my pumpkin and squash in. And I'm just going to let them fall over the edges of this bed. This has been refurbished with quail manure and um, quail mulch from their pen. I'll let the, the things fall over the edge here. This bed here, I might stick some sweet potato in for this side. I've grabbed that fella here that I just found on the ground here as, as I dug up the sweet potato all over the joint. Here's some beetroot again all, I did thin it out a little bit and I placed the thinned out plants in the middle here and Look, root crops don't go very well like carrots, beetroot, to, when you replant them. They take a while to get re-established. That's why these ones in the middle are smaller than these ones that I've left grow from seed and stay in situ. What I'm going to do now is 
just thin them out as they grow so I'll, I'll thin them out so that we can have baby beets and eat them and cook with them and then as they're thinned out we'll let the other ones grow on to larger size so thin as we go and eat rather than thinning all out and replanting in this bed here is where I've got my ginger which is dormant at the moment and these potatoes are all self seeding potatoes that I've transplanted here that I've found around the place and these lettuces here have come up all over the joint they're a loose type lettuce there's another seedling there coming up obviously uh, they've been lying dormant and I've got about three or four coming up in this bed and I'm just going to leave them grow because it's not going to harm my ginger that's underneath this and neither of these potatoes they'll be long gone by the time my ginger starts coming through in spring this side I've got asparagus I found some more purple asparagus so I planted three or four more of them and so practically this last third is all asparagus except for that self seeding lettuce there purple type that's going to take a while now a few years before that's really great and on the go for harvesting I've got a few self seeding tomatoes coming up here again I'll just let them flop down over the edge if they make it they make it I, I don't want them to interrupt the bed but I'll let them flop down steal a couple of cherry tomatoes from them and pretty well that's the end of our, the walk through so that's it that's the update on my allotment I hope you enjoyed going through and checking out what I've got growing if you've got any questions please feel free to whack them below don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and thanks a lot for watching if you want a bit of a read go to my blog selfsufficientme.com I still like to do a bit of writing so you might find something interesting there. But apart from that, thanks a lot. Bye for now.